long time viewers of the channel will know that we've checked out this clip before but we didn't really have the appreciation of the tt race up until now and i've been checking out all a lot of other stuff that guy martin's done besides his legendary motorcycle uh racing at the tt yeah. so we want to revisit it with a better mind yeah. frame about it as this is a week where we're not doing any tv shows and the tt race is coming up so we figured this would be a good time to uh, revisit this clip hell it's good to dive into stuff uh sorry it's good to revisit stuff and we can appreciate the clip more it's usually not our style to revisit clips no uh, but it, this is the rare exception where we think it makes sense to do so yep. do anyway three two one i'm guy martin and um here we are for a, a bit of a lap of the tt so, here we go, start the first Supersport race, 2010. Right, June 2010, it's going to be Christmas, won't it? So yeah, here we are, um, down Braille, 600. I've only done three laps in practice on this bike, so I'm still sort of figuring my way around the bike. So, yeah, I've got a bit of an idea. I knew it, from practice that it was, um, that she was, she was quick and as you can see she's not hanging about so i think just about there we'll get about top gear i don't know top gear on these bikes it's not so fast as 600 not the you know, maybe maybe you're doing 140 150 mile an hour in a place or two but here we are down into i've said this before and i'll say it again i'm terrible at names but i think this is um oh yeah, cool. I'm, not, I'm not gonna i'm gonna i'm terrible with name. i'm gonna read it off. <laughs> the, what's making this clip for me is how relaxed he is and just just casually mentioning how intense how, how this uh where he's at in terms of speed and he's just feeling out the bike and man this is crazy and, and and the fact that he is only he's fairly new to this bike yeah it's yeah. nuts you only had three laps of practice which and, you know it's a long course and there's a lot of intricacies to the tt course so it's, but it's, but it's still it's still insane to be to be that comfortable pushing 150 on a on a fairly new piece of equipment oh 100 percent. that's that's crazy so yeah yeah off the pub quarter bridge i say i said read it, off, read it off the wall on the pub the quarter here we are at quarter bridge going into into braddon bridge so accelerate up here i think you get up to top end of third gear i think it's probably 100 odd mile an hour 120 mile an hour maybe back to second gear but this is first lap you see so i've got new tires full tank of petrol i'll probably just go back down to bottom gear just to get a bit of a Bit of a run out here into Union Mill, so here we are. Head down ass up as I say. So everything tucked in. Getting this past Snugbra. Just get everything tucked in. Ready for this fast kink here at Snugbra. You hear the bike revving up there, that's sort of see new tires, new tank of fuel. Let's rev the bike out in third there. Back a gear into into Union Mills. Back another gear there, Union Mills, and get on the throttle. A bit of a jump just here, you see, just just there. Bike just takes off a little bit there. You want to be on the throttle, the bike wants to be driving over there. And um, and that's us. That's us until until Glen Vine. Is it Glen Vine? Yeah. Like I've said before, terrible with names. So, yeah, head down, ass up. I'll probably try and get my ass on the back of the seat and my elbows tucked inside my knees. Get as tucked in as I can just to try and get the speed because every. Man. Oh my God. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. It's nuts. I, I've seen this clip a, a couple of times. I've seen TT racers do this from videos, but man, it, it never gets not exciting you know what i yeah. mean yeah yeah like you could watch this clip a thousand times and still feel the same way it's still just, doo -doo, doo -doo, yeah doo -doo, this, is, doo -doo. this is crazy yeah it's just the world is going by so fast oh yeah oh yeah every every you know you're carrying so much much so much momentum hang on say that again you're carrying so much momentum around this place you just need to every little bit makes a difference you know like going through a glen vine they just back a gear no brakes and get straight back on the throttle again just just there you get top gear now here we are this is probably on a super bike it is not so much on a 600 this is probably one of the toughest corners on the track crosby just here listen here that's screaming i think we looked on the telemetry after there that's the in top gear that's the that's where you get the most revs in top gear i think we was looking at 16,700 revs we was getting there so oh it's not doing the bike any favors at that really but then if you geared the bike specifically for that corner then you'd make a bit of a sacrifice everywhere else like going down now into the highlander this is where you're asking for the gearing and if you geared for back at Crosby there, you'd, you'd be sacrificing this part of the track here. So that's, depending on the wind, that can be the fastest part of the track there. So Yeah, that's that's a good point. Setting up a 
any motor motor vehicle, whether it be a motorcycle, a stock car, uh, a F1 car, in certain corners, like sometimes you got to give up some for other corners as well. Yep. Just pick and choose yep. which ones yep. you want the best handling in, best cornering speed. It's 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 like a a balance system. You you lose some there to gain a lot somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, right, right, so. exactly. Here we are in a Grieber Castle. Back a gear and back another gear, and then Apple Dean. Like I would say it's all about, especially the 600 round, it's all about carrying momentum. You know, less braking. It's a bit like um, yeah, Apple Dean. Back a, oh, you'll go back a gear, just drive through here. See, I'm just first time, but you know, it's a first, I think I've not rode this bike for. I think I rode it one lap in practice on Monday, one lap or two laps on Wednesday, and then that's this. this what day? What day did I ride that? Was it Monday? Monday, yeah, Monday. That's yes. Yeah, so I've only done, I've only done three laps. So I'm still getting a bit of a feeling my way around the bike. But yeah, the job's going all right to me, and I'm sort of guessing what to do, and I'm not seeing anyone. I think I'm getting a couple of glimpses up here of Adrian Archibald, just getting an idea of of what I'm doing. And I think you see ten second intervals, and I think I've probably gained. I don't know. As you see Archibald just in the distance there, so I probably pulled back half of that. You know, so he's probably got five seconds. So I'm thinking Adrian Archibald's one TT. He's not going bad. There's my uncle Rob there doing me pit ball for me. He obviously doesn't know because the only the first timing spot isn't until Glen Helen, which is another few miles down here. So he just give me a board there to give me an idea of where he's going to be for when I come round on the second lap. So I'm catching Archibald here, and I'm probably thinking to me, saying, "Yeah, you're not doing so you're so bad, Martin." You know, you know, you sometimes when you can't see the man in front when he's ten seconds, you think, "Well, yeah, you need to pull your finger out here, and you need to pull your finger out there." But seeing Archibald, you know, Archibald's, you know, he's flying. And he's, you know he's been quick all through practice, and he's won TTs a couple of years ago. So if I'm pulling him in. I can't be doing bad. So keep it smooth. Concentrate on where I'm going. Get the apex right, and the uh, you know, job should be right. So here we are, Glenmore, Glenmore filling station. I'm not. I don't like this bit here. You see, you see there, it's all resurfaced. There's a bit of tarmac, tire marks there, and that's all from the front pushing. The front pushes over there because the road drops away, and it's just. I had a bit of a moment, I ran over my own foot in practice there, I lost the front and put my foot down and ran over my own foot and that didn't fill me with confidence, so... Oh my he God. ran over his own foot! Jeez! Oh. Jeez! This one tough guy. Man. Oh, how? <laughs> yeah, I go through there with a bit of... Um, what's the word? A bit of... I'm not very good with words. I'm not very good with big words. Go through a bit of um, mm -hmm. just holding back a little bit. I want to, you know, I'm not too full of confidence. I've gone back a, a gear to there. But that's what we're on. Kate's cottage here. Or Sarah's cottage. I get confused between the two. Really, should carry momentum through there and go through there in second. But say, like I've said before, I'm just getting used to this bike and getting used to where I need to change gears and what have you. And, um, and I'm seeing Adrian Archibald in the, in the distance. So this is, you see, I've just got to get it. You know, I'm sort of thinking, oh, I'm going to catch him. Where am I going to pass him? And then that's sort of taking my mind off the job where I need to change gear and I need to do this here and do that there. And I've been catching Archibald and I'm thinking, oh, no. But anyway, here we are. Cronky body. First one's flat. Second one's flat. Third one in. That's the first one. Flat out. But you see, Adrian maybe isn't taking a flat. So I'm having to sort of judge what he's going to do because, you see, we're going at these speeds here. You know, 140, 150, 160 mile an hour. You know, you're using every inch of the road, as you can see here. And you've got no room for mistake, have you? So... You know, I need to suss out what he's going to do. So, here going into Anley's. I'm thinking, can I do him on the brakes into here? But he's got a good drive out there. And I'm sort of, you know, because I've caught, what, we sort of seven or eight mile into it. And I've caught ten seconds on him already. I thought, oh, no, you don't, I don't need to be losing time. You know, I don't know where I am in the race. Am I, am I leading it? Am I tenth place? Am I fifth place? I, I don't know. So, I just need to get cracking. I need to, you know, I'm catching Archibald and he's holding me up here. So, yeah. That's that's in, that's crazy to think. Like he doesn't even know where he is in the race. Like he's fifth, tenth, first. Who knows? He's just. I, I love that though. It's it's kind of like he's just focused. If he sees a another racer in front of him, he's focused on passing him. It's yeah. Like that takes his mind off of everything. Which is what didn't he say that that was like a not necessarily a good thing? Because then he forgets yeah. his his gears and stuff. He he gets gearing and you know where to turn into a certain corner. Yeah, it, it's distracting to have to maneuver around another bike. Yeah, so. it just it just adds another layer like of, of complexity to what you're trying to do. Right, right. I think right, top of a gara. Oh I go for a bit there, do I? 
Yeah. Mm. Now you see, that's a bit near. And I'll probably, I know probably you boys looking at that, you think, my God, that looked like a near-death experience, but it's not. I can, you know, I'm dead confident to ride closer, as, as close to Adrian as that, just be, you know, because of everything that he's done. And I've rode with him, I, I rode racing Ireland with him, you know, doing national road races in Ireland, and I feel dead confident to ride with him. In fact, he lent me an helmet at one of the last races, one of the, one of the races last year, so I get on with him, and I, I'm dead, I feel dead confident in riding with him. So, pass him down into the 13th. Test. Yeah, that's another element of it is knowing uh how a another racer is going to race like that's oh. your reputation is everything when it comes to the other racers there yeah you're like okay he's good he's 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 a he's like a tight racer and he's not prone to wild movements and i can predict what he's going to do yeah and and then yeah. you can formulate your overtake plan exactly you know whereas someone knew I, I would give them as much cushion as possible yeah yeah so now uh, that's, it, that's it you know i probably probably lost my mojo a little bit trying to get past area and i'm probably trying to you know panicking a bit and lost my flow so i'm just gonna have to you know gather me gather me thoughts again and um and get cracking and try and smoothen up like i say it's not about how break you can how late you can break and how soon you can get on the throttle it's just all about flow and carry momentum like a downhill mountain bike race Fact, that's what I was watching. That would have been. This is races on Monday. On Sunday was the the World Cup in um, in Scotland. I was quite excited about that. I, would, I think the British lad won it. Giaffin, he's impressive. I'll show you guys watching more bikes. You don't really want to know about mountain bikes, do you? but that was a good. It was a good race. Toughest mountain bike race in the world. Well, for, for, for a downhill race. But anyway, anyway not one mountain bikes. The motorbikes out. Ren Cullen. This is it. I'm probably just gathering my thoughts again now. This is smoothing the smoothing the job off a bit. And here we are. Second part of Ren Cullen. First pit board there. See that? He had his hand up, so obviously I'm doing alright. I think that was P1 plus 1.7. So I'm thinking, right, right, I must be doing alright. Even that bit of arch, where I was, you know, that bit of the track where I was trying to get past the arch, but I haven't lost too much time, so I must be doing alright. You know, I'm obviously leading the race, so everything must be going well. And then he's going through my head, well, who is leading? And I know Butchie was going well in practice, Michael Dunlop was going well in practice, and if Michael Dunlop's going well, he's only 10 seconds behind me. Now, is he catching me? Can he see me? What's he doing? Or is it Bruce Anston? Bruce Anston. He hasn't had such a good time on a super bike or a super stock bike, but on a 600, he's always must have on a 600. He was winning, leading the race last year by 10 seconds when he had a bike problem. And um, so I'm thinking, you know, all that's going through your head as you're doing this. So um, there we are for Ballast Bridge, back to bottom gear. So, um, you know, you've got to show these things, especially these 600. You know, when I was talking back there at Crosby, them things are revving to 16,000, 16 odd thousand revs. You know, especially that bit of Crosby there, 16,700 revs. You know, it's not, you know, it's, it's not. Oh, you know, it's, it, it won't do that forever. So you've got to show a little bit of mechanical sympathy, especially around the TT. You know, you just can't murder them at every opportunity. You've just got to show them a bit of respect. So here we are on the run into Quarry Bends. Now I'm just thinking, what am I looking for? There we are, back in gear. Quarry Bends. Just ease through there, so we're in 50 now. 50, just easing through there. And now, just about there, I can get back on full throttle. And now, same again, head down, ass up. Get my elbows inside my knees and get tucked in. This is here. This is here. Um, you know, first lap, and um, you know you're not too. You're not really tired. I mean, people have talked about it being, you know, really, really. It is. It's a tough spot, but it's not that bad. I mean, I'm sat down here and I'm sort of relaxing. I'm moving my hands about on my handlebars, just trying to, you know, trying to get the blood flowing again. Just, you know, just trying to relax. And you know, because you've got a fairly tough part of the track coming up. You know. How do you relax while yeah. doing this? Yeah, you're just, I'm just going to like loosen my hands up, try to get the blood flow because, you know, I can just relax. Like, dude, you're going 150 plus miles an hour. Relax. Holy yeah. crap. How? Almost no cushion with any part of the track. Ugh. Got into Solby, which is, you know, from sixth gear down to bottom gear. Then we've got ginger, um, ginger roll, which is up on your right hand side just after just after Solby, but the, but the run all the way from there, all the way into Ramsey. Now that is hard work. See, so I've, I've had it fairly light up to now, really, you know, not too much, but you'll see, just as you go over this hill here, that's, that was Ginger all there, just here. Now, now I'm, when I'm going to start with names here, I haven't got a clue. Now, Glenn Tram and rings a bell. But you can see now, you look how much that camera's rattling about. You see, that now I'm having to clean up the DLR. I'm a bit of a passenger down here. You know, you're just sort of holding the bike, and the bike's handling well, and it's going well, so I'm sort of fairly able just to hold it flat out and just hang on for dear life. Because sometimes you get down here, especially a super bike, you know, when it's not quite handling 100%, you just can't hold it flat out through there. You just have to hang on and hope for the best. 
Whereas a 600 there, I can see you know everything's going well, so I'm pretty confident to just hold it flat out and just and let it move about under you, um, and you know, and job should be grand. So yeah, I think Glen Channel was a bit back there, and I'm just going through here. You see this here, you're going through this there, and you've always got to be careful. This not that there, just here on the left, that curb jumps out of you. There. There's a big K on the tree, just to warn you for that curb. So always, you know, you, 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 you know, we've done, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 laps worth of practice before before this race. So I've got a good idea of what to what to look for on it. And um, here we have a schoolhouse corner just there. It's a Milltown College. Milltown College, I think. On the running to Ramsey. And here we are, this is schoolhouse corner, the next one. There's a bit of a wall on your right hand side there. Let's see, salmon pink. I've always said, I think I've said this before in another video, always break at a salmon pink wall. Back in gear and chuck it in into Parliament Square. And now, like we've had a real tough bit of work from um, Ginger Hall all the way into Ramsey. That was hard work, that was, you know, and I've got four laps to do on this 600. And um, we've just got to try and pace, not pace myself, and just, you know, show, show, show a bit of respect to the bike, because it's got to last, you know, it's got to last four laps, and probably, what, nearly an hour and 20 minutes worth of racing, so, I'm going to show a bit of respect. Man. Wow. An hour and 20 minutes. So, let's see. So that's 60 plus 80. Basically, a lap is 20 minutes. That's, and going 150 miles an hour. Like, that's, talk about endurance, man. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. Uh, that's nuts. Yeah. I mean, shit, we could have figured that out because this video is 18 minutes and 40 seconds. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> we got to do, we got to do math whenever yeah. we can, right? Yeah. Yeah. Back to, uh, and, and, and get cracking. So, where are we are now? It's, it, it's a bit of a, kind of time for the bike now we're on the run up to the up, run up through mayo up to ramsey airpin back to bottom gear and then that's the mountain which is really i suppose it's a bit more short circuit like all right it's open and you've got you know you can see most of the island from up there but it's um right. it's a lot kinder on the bike yeah. just going through here into waterworks i can just sort of hear what gears i'm changing and what have you and maybe i'm thinking for the second race which is tomorrow Maybe I should show it a bit more respect and maybe not quite rev it as hard. But then I want to win. I mean, I think probably still at this point here I'm leading. Or, I'm, you know, there's whatever the way. I think for the whole race there was nothing in it. I was leading and then I was seconded. But it was all by a second, plus a second, minus a second. You know, it was such it was a real close race between me and it, Hutchie. As I learnt later on that it was Hutchie. In the pit stop I learnt that it was Ian Hutchinson. Yeah, but he's going well. I think a man needs to stop him, doesn't he? You know, what's he doing? He's won three races this week. I need to put a stop to that tomorrow, I think, don't I? I've got my mate John there. You see that? P1 plus 2. So that's good for me. I'm not doing such a bad job. So from where I had the pit board at Ren Cullen. I never mentioned it. The pit board at Ren Cullen with Andy Kershaw. You know the Radio 4 DJ? Yeah. I love a boy. He is. I love a boy. I've learned a thing or two off that man. I think he's just been come back from Cambodia. That's where he has. Interesting bloke anyway. <laughs> anyway, pit board. That's my second pit board. That's young John. <laughs> I love how during all of this, like how unbothered he is. Yeah. Is he? He's just riffing on other things like the World Cup and his buddies, and that's. Uh, it's he's like, just what? built different. <laughs> yeah, he's just different, man. He yeah. just like, this is just a normal day for him. Yeah, you know, yeah. like that's what he just. He, it just sounds so confident and so sure of what what he's doing, and it's it's amazing because yeah. this is not normal. This is no. This is insane. Yeah, Guy Martin is not a normal man. John there. Young John at, um, at the Gooseneck. So here we are now, like I said before, head down our up, get tucked in, ready for the run up the mountain. And there we are. The bike's having to work fairly hard up here. All right, it's not bumpy, but it's, it's a lot smoother going on the, on, on the bike. You know, it's not rattling the bike about. It's not rattling everything loose on it. You know, it's, it, the bike's having, you know, you can't see. You can really give it a good impression on the telly there. But it's um, it's a pretty steep. The bike's having to work really hard to pull up here, especially pull me as well. I mean, I'm not a lot of I'm about 10. I've been on a bit of a diet, really, but I think, oh, what have I got to, what have I get to? I think the start, of, the start of this year, I was about, oh, I, was, I was knocking on 12 stone, I think. But now I've got down to 10 stone 8, so I'm quite happy with that. And look there, I can see someone else in the, in the, in the distance, I think. Yeah, 10 seconds in front of me was Adrian Archibald, and 10 seconds in front of Archibald was Cameron Donald. A bit of an up and down year for Cameron at the minute. And, you know, he showed, he showed his quality last year at the TT. You know, what was he doing? His Thursday night of practice, he was 131 and a half, and everyone was just gobsmacked for the speed that he'd gone round and then the next night the Friday night um come off and separated his shoulder and injured a few other bits and bobs he's never really been on it since with the northwest 200 which is another big race before the before the tt that's um that's a fortnight before the tt he didn't quite go there and i just 
everyone thought, and like I thought, was he just sort of, you know, was he sandbagging? I mean, sand, I don't know, would anyone know what sandbagging means? It's a bit like um, poker face. You know, sandbagging, holding back, not preserving your bike, preserving your energy until the moment you need to, you know, pass him and win the race. The Northwest Tour, it is a big event, but really all it is is to blow the cobblers out for the TT, you know, the TT being, you know, the pinnacle of road racing, which it is. You know, whenever everyone thinking, he was, was he just out there for, um, you know, to blow his cobwebs out and just, you know, sort of um, sandbagging, but... We'll see. His TT hasn't quite gone to plan at the moment. Everyone was coming to the TT, you know, like I was. Whether John McGuinness or Ian Hutchinson was thinking the same. We thought Cameron was going to be the man to catch, but he's just not looking like it at the moment. You know, here we are. I've caught, uh, yeah, I've caught probably what like two thirds of the way around the around the course, and I've already mm. caught 20 seconds on. So he's not, he's not on the pace. Well, the Suzuki 600, good bike that it is, probably hasn't quite got the legs on Martin. Martin's on the You can see the speed of it. It's not slow at all. Definitely not. So here I have got back to get back to what I was talking about on the track again. So here we are going <laughs> up Hillers Rise. And this is probably one of my favourite parts of the course. Not this little bit here. I've never quite sussed this job out. Back a gear there, back to here. And I call this bit sort of Hillers Rise on the mountain box, I think. But this from this point here to, the, well, to, back to Keppel Gate, I've one of my favourite parts of the course. I mean, you can see here, this is the start of the 32nd. You see, the 32nd is three left-handers. The first one there, second one there, third one there. And that uh, takes a bit of building up to that, just because it's, it demands 100% commitment to get down there. And into the new windy corner. Well, I say new, I think they resurfaced it about three years ago. And you can see the cam on it there. And um, now on the run into the 33rd. Now remember, the 32nd is three left-handers, and the 33rd is two left-handers. You have to get that right. And I'm a bit simple sometimes, I keep forgetting. But anyway, here we go, going into the 33rd. Back a gear, keep it tight to the fence on the right side there, back another gear. And these white lines on the road are really pronounced white lines. Yeah, they've unsettled the bike one of them. You'll see, see Cameron just in front there, and I'm trying to suss him out. And this is where Cameron had his moment last year. So am I thinking about this as I'm going up to go on the inside of him there? Ooh, Ooh. Okay. Yeah, that's close. Ooh. So I know coming down here, I thought, right, because 600 are so closely matched, what I'll do on this last little bit of Keppel Gate, I'll just hang back, you see there, let the gap, yeah, and then I'll accelerate before him and accelerate and try and pass him down into, into Craig A Little bit of back brake there to stop it wheeling. You can see I've got the drive out there, and that's allowed me to pass Cameron down to here. Just do it on the brakes. Job's a good wow. Oh, you see, I went down to bottom gear there, and I shouldn't have done really. But I think that was probably, I was probably a bit discombobulated, just having to pass Cameron on the inside there. Went back to bottom, you know, just lost, lost that bit of uh, momentum again, and went back to bottom. But I shouldn't have done that. I'll note that for the for, for the second lap. You see, Luke going around there in first gear, just losing momentum all the way down into Brandish. I think what call it. So this wow. was done, I think, 2007. Brandish. You see, before this used to be back to three gears into a tighter left hand, and now we're going into you know from six gear down to fifth. And you can see how fast they are. You just go back a gear, don't touch the brakes, just go back one gear, and then accelerate around Brandish down into down into Wilbur. Back another gear, no brakes, just chuck her in and, and get her out on the throttle. Just careful of that wall there. Don't feel your confidence as you're going in there. You know that, that wall. Anything goes wrong at all. I see what I've had there as well. These people taking pictures on there and that big flash. You, know, you get like a welder's flash going in there. It sort of takes your attention. And yeah, I've made a mistake or two there. So yeah, I'm never waiting for that every time. But anyway, here we are. Going into the signpost corner. You see there. So don't go back to bark up and bottom. Just stay in second gear. Rever up into bedstead. And exhale out of bedstead. I've met a mine of on. On Murphy there, she gives me because you can sort of lose your way around here. You know, you, I know I'm just on the end of the first lap, but when you go to the second lap, you need to pull in the petrol. You know, pull in the petrol, get your tyres changed, not on the 600, but you know, to get your a fresh visor on, get your, your screen cleaned. And um, you know, but sometimes you come in on your second lap and you're thinking, now is this my second lap or is it my third lap or is it my first lap? <laughs> you, know, you just sort of you get a bit, you know, all of a dither. You know, you've got so much going on in your head and you sometimes can forget which lap that you're on. So Yvonne there, she just sticks a pit board out when it when I'm on the end of the second lap just to remind me to come into the fuel. But there we are, start and finish again. I didn't take long, did I? Yeah, right. Fingers crossed for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that was the lap of the super sport. Um, fingers crossed for the weather tomorrow. Eh? We'll give it another shot. Golly! That's nerve wracking, dude. He's a true man. He is just built differently. That's I. I don't know. I just wouldn't function in that in that scenario ever. I just couldn't. That's just so. It's anxiety inducing. Oh yeah. I just knowing how fast your mind has to work, what you have to think about going into it, 
how fast you're going and then on top of it adding the the extra layer of danger by passing people oh my god hi martin Man. you are a god amongst men yep all okay. right y'all <laughs> i'm not sure if we're gonna do coverage of the tt when it comes about but let me let me just do a check the calendar real quick to see what our float schedule is so that's an off week so i guess we could probably do it like first week of of it but uh the second week i'm also going to be in the uk and unfortunately i won't be in uh, the tt because in fact i've been offered during that trip by a, a fam family member of uh, some legends of the TT race to crash there, but n not like that. But I mm. had to respectfully decline because TT is something that you have to experience it in its entirety, the full two weeks. And if I could possibly squeeze in the Irish road racing, that might be a great thing, but it's on my radar for at least 2025. It's not something you just visit. It's something no, that you take part no. of. I'm here for the whole time. Right, it's a thing that has to be the full thing. Yeah. Oh, 100%. I, I agree with that. One million percent. Well, it wouldn't do it justice just to stop by. Right. And yeah. I'm not I'm not sure if we're going to do coverage of it, but stay tuned and to see if we do. But yes. Anyway, y'all, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing and watching another video. And what Definitely. else, Dan? Unplug and do something legendary, guys. See y'all next time. Later.